Okay, last video was pretty heavy lifting. Uh, we showed the algebraic limit theorems for sequences, which told us that we can multiply them, add them, uh, divide them, and scalar multiply, and that the limits behave nicely in, in a way that we hoped they would. This next uh, result is in, of a similar nature, but we're not going to go through such a heavy lifting exercise to actually go and prove it. Um, we'll sort of sketch out the ideas, and then we'll demonstrate how it works. So here it is, it's the so-called order limit theorem. We've, again, we've got two convergent sequences, a n and b n, and we're saying three different things, all of which are relatively similar. The first one says that if my sequence terms are non-negative, then my limit itself must also be non-negative. Um, that's good, so it means that I cannot have a negative limit and have all of my terms being positive at the same time. Second one, similar statement, uh, it says if two sequences are such that one is always less than or equal to the other one, then the limits also obey that property. You cannot have the limits crossing over at the end, but the sequence terms obeying a n is less than or equal to b n. And finally, for the third one, it says if we have a real number c, uh, for which c is less than or equal to b n, very similar to the first one, um, my limit must also be greater than or equal to c. It's like replacing 0 with c, and we've got the same thing. And then we have a corresponding statement for less than or equal to's. So what we're going to do is we're going to sketch out how the proof might work for number 1, and talk about how the arguments that would be required to get numbers 2 and 3. I'm not going to do full proof this time. So let's go for proof-ish of 1. So strategy here would be to go for a contradiction. Um, what we'll do is we'll say assume. So remember, when, when we do a, a contradiction, we have to negate the proof, uh, the statement that we're trying to prove. So the negation of an implication like this one is to assume the hypothesis to be true, and also the negation of the result. So we're going to assume that our sequence terms are all positive and that our limit is negative. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll sketch this in, and we'll illustrate what this would actually mean. So here's my limit A, it's negative, and it's way down there. And my sequence terms are constrained to live up here. Right, so we can already see a problem, uh, especially if we draw it with a decent gap there. We can see that there is a gap that we're not going to be able to bridge. If we were to actually write a proper proof of this, we need to know how we should attack this to actually express what we can see quite clearly in front of us. Now, again, we're going to have to use the fact that the sequence A converges. So what that means is we want, we're going to want to draw a band around our limit. Remember, if a sequence converges, then we can draw one of these bands, and we can make it as skinny as we like. And the convergence definition guarantees that eventually, i.e. after some value capital N, all of the terms beyond that will lie within our band. So this is going to produce our contradictory statement here. Um, all we need to do is come up with an epsilon that will work for us, and then we'll get our two contradictory statements. So I'm going to let you think for a second about what a good choice of epsilon might be, and then I'll, we'll see, what, see what, we can, what we can do with it. So you might want to pause it if you haven't got one yet, but otherwise, maybe a good epsilon, the kind of tidiest one to choose might just be the absolute value of A itself. Okay, you might have come up with the absolute value of A over 2, or something like that. Don't forget that A is a negative number here, so you cannot just use, just use A. So I'm going to let epsilon equal the absolute value of A, which for us will be negative A. Okay, because a is negative. A n converges, so there exists n such that absolute value of a n minus our candidate limit, which is a, is less than or equal to my epsilon, negative a, for, no, less than, sorry less than negative a for n greater than or equal to our n. 
Right, in particular, this means that a n is going to be less than 0. And that directly contradicts this statement here. Now, if you'd chosen epsilon to be negative a over 2 or something smaller than a, then that was that's going to work out equally tidily. You just need to get the less than statement for the band, i.e. the upper limit statement, and that will result in an a n that's going to be less than 0. The exact choice of epsilon doesn't matter, so long as it's negative a or smaller, then it will be all good. Okay, so that's cool. So that's how that one works. Um, if you maybe as an exercise, you might want to set it out slightly more formally than what we did. We did kind of the rough working version. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. So part two uh, is quite straightforward. Now that we've got part one, part two comes out nicely because if a n is less than or equal to b n, it means the sequence b n minus a n has got to be greater than or equal to zero. And using our algebraic limit theorem, we've got scalar multiplication and we've got addition here. So that implies that b minus a is greater than or equal to zero by one. Okay, so part two follows directly from part one and the algebraic limit theorem. And finally, part three, um, if there is a real number for which c is less than or equal to bn, or bn is greater than or equal to c if you like, it's very similar to part one. So the way to go about this one is to create the sequence bn minus c is greater than or equal to zero and show that bn minus c converges to zero. Let's just fix that side. B n minus c is greater than or equal to zero, which means that b minus c must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, again using part one to justify that. Okay, so that's that's all I want to do with the order limit theorems. Um, they can be useful. It just shows that nothing strange happens with result with regard to sequences swapping sign at the end or anything like that. If you've got this thing here, then their limits behave nicely as well.